What is up? Welcome to the American Peloton. I'm Jonathan Crane. I'm a mediocre Cat 2 cyclist out of Birmingham, Alabama. And I'm Ben, head coach at Skyway Cycling and team director at Skyway, presented by Domus Deep Coffee. There is a ton of stuff happening. We didn't even have time. We ran over doing our little uh, pre-show, like here's what we're going to talk about rundown. So I'm going to just like jump straight in and uh, get into it here. The first thing on my list is uh, Riley Sheehan, who was on Den- Denver Disruptors last year at uh, Flanders, 13th. Yeah, uh, 13th. Yeah, <laughs> pretty insane ride. And an example of a guy who like did well on the American scene last year, won Joe Martin, um, and, but wasn't like just absolutely stomping everyone. And the thing that we say... like. He was better than everyone else, but he was not like lapping the field at every criterium the way mm-hmm. that uh, certain people on Reddit would have you believe. I uh, say last time I checked, Flanders is not a two dot pro, so uh, <laughs> your your move Reddit. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we had to start there. Um, so since our last show, there really there's been this big gap of racing. There's sort of the early season block of uh, mostly like short stage races. And then we've been in this sort of no man's land, but there has been a little bit of racing. uh, Some of which I was able to watch down in Belize. They had the uh, cross country, which I think initially became sort of known in America because the Williams brothers uh, were going down there and doing it. And, uh, in recent years, it's um, they've taken more and more guys down there, and it seems like other teams at that level have um, have started going down there as well. So, watching the race, a, a few things jumped out at me, and there were there was a lot from this uh, block of we had Belize, and then is it Jamaica was the other big one? Jamaica, yeah. So the Belize weekend was first, and that's what we're looking at right now, and uh, Belize surprise surprise a guy that we've been seeing at races and knew was like kind of on a on a tear this year at least it's making me feel better because i've been chasing this guy around um max abner who rides for ngca um he was third in this race and uh he was guest he was not riding for ngca there he was guest riding for skyline so two interesting things there I think one man, this camera footage is so shaky. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Yeah, um, I think that uh, the Abner result. Someone correct me if I'm wrong here. I think that's Skyline's biggest result of the year. Maybe of the past two or three years. <laughs> it's certainly the the one I can think of. And then right. also, Blazers got totally shut out of the podium um they sent a pretty big squad here um cory williams uh cory lockwood and uh, watching the race back lockwood was doing a ton of work this was a really long race it was like six hours or something um lockwood as he is wont to do was on the front just doing a ton of work this footage is making me seasick so (laughs) (laughs) Right. we're going we're it's going like the clo- it's movie. like the cloverfield movie yeah I, I, <laughs> where people I was were throwing up in the theaters we were talking in our group chat today about how no road races can have coverage and i was like well that belize race had coverage and i do think most of it was better than what we were just watching i skipped it to the end i did i watched it but i scrubbed through it on the trainer i was only doing like an hour and a half so i i scrubbed through and i think this the last bit that we were just looking at is a lot shakier than the rest because they're getting into the city so there's more like traffic control and the moto guys getting bumped by speed bumps and stuff but yeah so a disappointing uh outing for miami who our prediction was that they were going to be the strongest of the uh williams racing development uh crew this year which i think is still Still maybe true yeah that's still the case just a a first swing and a first miss maybe yeah it's also like it's april and you know like the 
the Williams racing development teams don't do anything until Tulsa that they really care about. Right. So it's like a, you know, a random one off, you know, get some race time and get some race in the legs, but with that not focused on actually winning the race. Yeah, that that was before they even had team camp weekend, which I guess is a good segue. Oh, one more Belize thing that I have to mention is that uh, so Belize is technically a amateur race or non, like if you have a UCI pro license, you're not allowed to ride. Yep. And one goofy thing that happened is Alec Cowan yeah. has apparently has some side of some kind of Canadian pro card USA or pro card or uh, he has a UCI license, UCI license. Yeah. Yep. And Blazers is not a UCI team. So he was being told he wasn't going to be allowed to start. So he did start, but he signed in as Connor White. And then other riders noticed that he was not Connor White and he had Connor White's number on and uh, told the officials. So that was a whole mess. Which this literally just happened in the Women's World Tour. Like, Yeah. It, what is with this new? Okay. Is this a new thing? And it's just starting to happen now, or has this always been happening and we're just now catching it? Probably the latter. I would imagine, like, in the era of guys like hopping on trains in the Tour de France and, like, you know, drinking bottles of milk and amphetamines, like, people yeah. were signing in other, under other people's names and stuff. I have to imagine also, like, before media became what it is and you didn't know right. what people looked like. You yeah, could, there was you no get Instagram. away with stuff like that. There's yeah, no yeah. way to be like, oh, this unless you were at the race, you don't know who Matthew Vanderpool looks like, right? So you can get away with stuff like that. Yeah, I guess in a pre-Instagram world, how would you check? But now you can, uh, you can get on there and <laughs> double check it. All right now, now it's clear. Now it's obvious. But so that was goofy. Uh, you had something from from jamaica though right yeah so jamaica i don't know the official name of the race it's like the jamaican bicycle racing classic or something like that it's a it's a brief stage race out there um work hard be humble who's one of the uh they're a fresh d1 team last year uh, second year team this year they've recruited a lot of really good talent but out of nashville yeah. had some good success toward the end of last year with caesar Marte. Yep. Um, also Preston I. Um, some new recruits for them, Gabe Mendez from Miami Knights, a guy named Brian Newsom, who's kind of a uh, first year racing last year, kind of went up through the ranks super quick, um, as well as some other guys. And they went down to Jamaica and had a really good result. Um, so they, the podium was first and second was Team Medellin. And then third place was Work Hard, Be Humble with Gabe Mendez for the GC. And Preston got second in, uh, I believe, stage two or three. So really good outing for them. Yeah, Gabe is a huge pickup there. Gabe's coming over from NCL, uh, NCL Miami last year where he was. We mentioned it. I mean, he came on this podcast on this show uh, last year. So we were kind of hyper aware of the work he was doing. But he was, he was a workhorse uh, for that NCL yep. Miami team. And, you know, shame he got cut there, but I'm glad he found a ride and he's uh, able to be back out there racing already. And it looks like they're going to do a pretty big calendar of, of American crit stuff. We were um, we were this close to getting him. That's got oh. <laughs> He's going to hate me for saying that. <laughs> I don't know if I could have helped him. That He didn't need the help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could just let him. Let it him would rip. be nice to let him just go off the front and then then my job's to just like yeah i got a guy in the break like i'm good you know yeah yeah that was that would have been the game plan for sure yeah 100 percent uh so while we're still in the williams racing development and i mentioned the um the team camp thing already i got a couple other little pieces there one is like Maybe a little bit of a correction. I feel like when uh, Justin Williams' suspension was announced last year, which has not actually like come to fruition yet, it starts uh, on the 13th, so it starts this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people 
including possibly us. Um, there's no way that anyone could go look back and verify whether we said this or not and we're wrong. Don't even try. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people said it was a weak suspension and it seemed like it was timed in a window that was like very convenient for him. Uh, but now that we have a calendar for this year to overlay with that suspension, it really starts right as USA crits starts. It takes all of USA crits, which like, I don't think that would have been a huge focus for him. He's not normally, he'll, he'll often do like Athens twilight. Um, and Legion will do some of that stuff, but it's not their ultimate focus, but it is kind of the big start. Like Sonny King is the big opener of crit season. It starts there and then it runs through Tulsa, which is normally the first race that, legion really really um you know traditionally they come out guns blazing um at that race so yeah april 13th to june 13th i think that also takes um armed forces cycling classic off the table for justin which is another big one that yeah legion normally targets so maybe more consequential suspension than we initially thought when we didn't have a calendar to look at for this year. Yeah, I think that that suspension really relegates him to the back two thirds of the ACC races only. Um, and to be honest, I don't know how much we'll see Justin anyways. He seems to be really more focused on being the director behind uh, Legion and running Williams Racing Development. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him really race anymore after this season. And with that suspension kind of running through all of the biggest races for the most part, save for Toad and Intelligentsia, I don't really see a reason why he'd be racing that much anyways, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. So who do you think that Legion is going to be? So they lost Tyler Williams to NCL. They mm-hmm. lost Boardman to Project Echelon. Um, who do you think they're going to be racing for this year? Maybe Robin? Yeah, Robin Carpenter. Yeah. That would make sense. Uh, I guess we'll see if he can step up You know, in the same way. He's kind of a different style of rider, so I wonder if we're going to see that like you know, Legion lined up six deep on the front the way we've seen in the past. I think... This is going to be a very different year from what we've seen in the past, both because of the differences of Legion, but then the sheer number of other teams that I think are are stepping up. Um, Mm -hmm. We talked about it last year, all these little incremental steps, but they keep happening, and I think we're going to have a really um, pretty even playing field this year. And one of the teams that I think is stepping up is in the Williams Racing Development house, the... um, formerly Austin Aviators. They used to be last year, and we talked about how they kind of underwhelming, but also a first year, so, you know, can't be too hard on them for that. They had a lot of talent and not a lot of results last year. Yep. They have switched. We kept saying, like, they haven't posted anything. They haven't posted a roster. Like, what's go? is this team folding? What's going on with them? They have changed the name. They are now Austin Outlaws, and... They got a few big pickups. Uh, Lucas Borgoyne already, he had a win um, at the first stage of Tour de Marietta out in California last week. And then I think he stayed out there and is headed to Redlands. I think they're splitting the squad, like some Redlands and some Sunny King this coming weekend. Uh, But they got Lucas Borgoyne and Luke Fetzger. This is not a full... uh, roster too they're still dribbling these announcements out but yep. i think paige costanecki is another big one we've talked about her animating the races on the women's side a lot yep. recently um, another one i noticed was amber joseph moving over from legion proper um, she's more of a track cyclist uh, and so i'm curious to see if she's going to keep her same track program just with austin outlaws or if this is kind of a sign that they're you know, going to push her to do more of uh, crit racing as well. Yeah, I think that supports our point that they're just trying to spread the talent out a little bit more this year. They saw that it was, uh, you know, not... They were, 
yeah, it was very lopsided last year. Aviators was really not able to be up there. And even Blazers, we talked about how Monk kind of saved their season with that, um, with that national championship win on the amateur side. For sure. Uh, I think this new branding makes more sense. Although there is like a, what, what is the level down football? Uh, I should know. I think we have one here. Oh, AFL. Yeah. I think there's an AFL team or a similar like sub NFL level football team that is the Austin outlaws. So there is. Okay. Potentially yeah. <laughs> some brand confusion there, but right. also maybe, maybe that's good. Maybe they can piggyback off of that. I think it makes that's, more sense for sure than aviators. That's, that's what the dot CC is for in the handle. Hmm. Gotcha. You know, so that's, that's the branding separation right there. So they're, <laughs> They're drafting <laughs> off of the existing uh, right <laughs> Austin Outlaws. No, I mean I think the we haven't seen real kits yet, but I think what I have seen looks better than what. Not that the old stuff was bad. It just like there wasn't anything to it really. Um, yeah, I'll be interested to see what their real kits look like. So they're all racing. All of three of the Williams Racing Devo. They all had. Um, team camp together which is i'm a little bit surprised from an optic standpoint they would do that because the big criticism they all get is that like they're basically entering three teams worth of people as one team in these races and then they did the team camp together and all their media is together and they're essentially wearing the exact same kit yep. this uh black asos with the hound's tooth sleeve and then just a small brand logo for whatever individual team they're on yeah they are not beating the collusion allegations with this one (laughs) yeah (laughs) no they but i think but i think from a branding standpoint if you're justin what they're doing makes sense um because you go if if, if legion's whole goal is to basically do in-house teams in a league and so it makes sense to kind of like, hey, we're going to share some sponsors, have everything, have the kits kind of look similar with numbers and names on them. For him, for a branding standpoint, I think it makes sense. Um, but from a bike racing, like neutral perspective, as far as optics goes, not a good look. Yeah. And they already have enough PR nightmares every year. They don't right. need to like tack onto this, you know. Yeah, and I think they're gonna have multiple teams racing at Redlands this weekend and essentially the same kit. So that's gonna be confusing just from like a racing and I know they're gonna have kits eventually, but it's surprising that uh you know, a team with that level of resources hasn't at least sort sorted like let's well, give let's give Legion the blank blue kit and outlaws the blank orange kit and blazers, the blank, I don't know, pink kit just for Redlands. Right. Um, or honestly it's April. I'm sorry. There's no excuse to not have your, your team kit. It is late. Yeah. It's yeah. And sorry, there's no excuse. Um, you should really be placing kit orders at in like November, like whether it is or not, it feels like intentionally confusing and it feels mm-hmm. like it's uh it's gonna play into the the people who want to criticize it for being that those teams are working together yeah. it's gonna feel like they are in the race mm-hmm. regardless because they're gonna look like the same squad do you well do you think them having the the wr devo thing they're pushing now almost like a them attempting transparency like hey we recognize that everyone knows that all three of these teams are owned by the same people Mm -hmm. we're just going to own it they're all wr devo they're three separate teams but like you know that's that's the way it is is that do you think maybe they're trying to be more transparent that way with this wr devo thing yeah i mean i think they see that working for the ncl with with their two last year and three this year teams Mm-hmm. Uh, no one was accusing the NCL teams of working together in the non-NCL races, which was 
the majority of the racing they did last year. Yeah. But I think that worked for two reasons. One is that they weren't doing all the same stuff. Denver did more of the stage races and Miami did more of the crits and where they did overlap. It didn't seem like they were leading each other out or working together at all. Um, and additionally, like they don't, I don't think they do. Okay. Like I stayed at the same hotel as, uh, NCL Miami for some of the speed week stuff last year. And I did not see NCL Denver, you know, like they were, totally separate and i don't see them doing team camps together maybe they are i don't know someone could tell me if they've seen them all together but if they are they're not then posting about it Mm -hmm. um and i don't know if that's intentional or not but it seems like those teams are are truly like separate organizations that compete together that have a shared ownership and compete against each other but yeah they're not um doing the same training, going to the same places, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, Speaking of Outlaws stepping up, though, and another thing I wanted to mention, uh, this is the finish from, or last three laps of Murrieta. This is from the um, LA Crits uh, YouTube channel, Ray Mars. Uh, These these are really good. I think these are like the bellwether of... um, small small production crew like what you can do with a small production crew it's pretty impressive that these are kind of small local races with a good broadcast um these have been trainer fodder for me but uh this was the race that lucas Burgoyne won the sprint um and i think the interesting thing here that i've seen from watching a lot of these a couple things this i speed felt team um they've been knocking on the door a lot they're in the white kits with uh fades to light blue um i think that's a team that on the west coast we may see this year a team that i wasn't aware of until i started uh watching these but they seem Mm -hmm. very strong they've been getting podiums up here and then also the um sr do you have the name of the team it's Thriva srct yes so SR stands for Scott Redding, SRCT, Scott Redding Cycling Team. This guy, Scott Redding, is apparently a professional motorcycle racer, like a MotoGP guy. Okay. I don't know anything about mo- motorcycle racing, so if it's like, you know, MotoGP1 or something, you know, don't crucify me on that. But the man races motorcycles, and... uh he has built this team to do bicycle racing. I guess he was riding bikes to cross train and got into racing that way. And uh, he's come over to do a bunch of crits and built this team around him to do crits. And he's been really successful. He is second in this race, which is pretty insane. Yeah, absolutely. Um, It's really cool. UK based team coming out. Um, And again, it seems like more and more international teams are, taking the trip over here and elevating the level of our racing and kind of validating what we've been saying for so long is that the racing here is hard. It's real and it's worth paying attention to. Yeah. And that people, people want to pay, pay attention to it and come do these races. Yep. Man, the overhead shot of this, uh, sprint is crazy. Uh, Borgoyne kind of comes out of nowhere to pip Redding at the line. Yep. Redding has gotten second or third in like several of these races I've watched. It feels like he's in kind of a, like what Thomas Gibbons was a few years ago, kind of situation where he's like a perennial second or third. And I think that brings me to another thing we got on today. I think we can move from like races that have already happened and start talking about races that are about to happen or started today uh that Thriva SRCT team was second at Redlands today. Yep, with Tom Williams. Um Redlands is kind of the classic American stage race at this point. It might be the longest running stage race. I feel race. like it's the in in my mind it is like the biggest one now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the one mm-hmm. that now that like Colorado and Utah are gone Joe Redlands Martin's is done. like yeah. yeah, Joe Martin R.I.P. Um, 
yeah, Redlands is like the most prestigious, I guess. Uh, yeah. Sort of regardless. Um. Yeah, and so first was Tyler Stites from Project Echelon. Not really a surprise there. Nope. Um, third, Denver Disruptors with Stephen Bassett, which I think is pretty cool. I kind of hoped that we were going to get to this podcast before Redlands started uh, this show so that I could make a prediction, but my prediction was going to be... I'll, I'll go ahead and give both of my predictions right now. Uh, on the men's side, I think that Echelon wins Redlands, and I think that um, Rainstorm wins Sunny King. Yeah, I I agree with that. But yeah, just like we were talking about a second ago with the sort of like differing calendars for those NCL teams... Uh, Denver going to Redlands doing the stage race as they have as they did last year. That's kind of their identity or whatever. And uh, I think Miami is coming to Sunny King, which I guess we'll talk Redlands and then we'll move into Sunny King. Um, mm-hmm. Not a ton we can talk about other than just looking at at the results and stuff because there is no. Uh, no stream or anything for Redlands, so we're just sort of following along via social media. Yep. Let's, um, uh, let's check the women's results, too. Um, yeah, for sure. Because there's prob- there's got to be some talking points there as well. I've got a couple other things uh, on the men's side, team-related, but yeah. So the first thing I noticed on the women's results is just Siniska Cycling is not a team I recognize. So Yep. Um. DNA Megan Easler is not a name I know either, but DNA Pro Cycling is a team I expect to be up there. Uh, Ali mm-hmm. Shafi for Fount Fount Cycling Guild that's a big ride for her. Um, Absolutely, was we she, saw her. Was she the one that was in the break at NCL Atlanta? Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. We okay. we saw her at a we saw her at NCL Atlanta. Um, well, it's hard to say who was in the break <laughs> because it's an NCL race, so they're subbing people in and out, but. Yeah. She definitely did score points at NCL Atlanta. Um, okay. We saw her in real life when that race got really, really interesting um, doing stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if um, if Virginia's Blue Ridge 2024 doesn't find their way on to that podium over the next couple of days as things start to get climbier, though. I think they're, yeah. you know, 12 seconds is not a huge margin, especially knowing the amount of um K- k's and climbing they've got coming up so uh, that's i think my prediction there is maybe even that virginia's blue ridge 2024 probably them and dna are one and two i'm not sure which order i'll put them in because i haven't really seen much of either of them this year so yeah i don't have a ton to go on yeah i think that's a safe bet to make as far as the results there for the women's side but i mean it's redlands it's awesome (laughs) you know (laughs) the crit's amazing so yeah i'm i feel like redlands people on the european side talk about like you know is is msr opening weekend like what when does real racing start and i think that it's fair to say that in america this is the week that real racing starts. Like the preseason is over and the season is here um, with Redlands and with Sunny King, which like don't always overlap like this, but certainly with both being this weekend, it's like unequivocal that, that it's uh, this is the opening weekend for sure. Um, Absolutely. The thing that I was reminded of, looking at those results is the ribble rebellion team they are over here and they were announced as doing usa crits but it looks like they're doing redlands they're gonna miss sunny king and then they're gonna come over for the rest of usa crits so they're trying to spread it out but they finally did a kit reveal i didn't realize the black kit they were running was not their final kit or whatever i'm really glad it's not (laughs) but yeah i this you know what? Looks good. I, okay, I got mixed feelings on this kit. Like, okay. I don't hate it, but this kit and the, um, I, okay, I think the bike paint job looks really good. 
Mm -hmm. I do think it's like goofy and impractical. I know it's part of the the thing with these uh, handlebars that they're unwrapped, but I think that's that's goofy and impractical. I think when your bars swing around and hit your top tube one time, you got to throw your whole rig in the trash, which is a dumb idea. Um, yeah, but the bikes do look cool. Like I can't argue with that for sure. Um, the kits though, it's like the same basic color scheme and paint job they took from the bikes to the kits. They look a little Easter egg E to me. That was what I was going to say is your criticism. They look like Easter. Yeah. And it's, it's funny that I like the kits, but I don't like the bikes and you like the bikes <laughs> and I don't like the kits. <laughs> Actually, you know what? The thing I like the most about the kits is it looks like the shorts have some kind of like, first of all, the shorts are like, they're blue. They're not black. Yep. And then they have some kind of speckle to them. Uh, I think that looks cool, but I think that it's also going to be confusing because the rainstorm kits are also a little bit Easter egg style. So, uh, crit beef, if you're out there watching, there's a meme in there somewhere with, uh, you know, two Easter eggs and then Rebel rebellion and rainstorm. And also it's like the arrow helmets. They've got the fully wrapped arrow helmets that are also like kind of Easter egg color or rainstorm does. I mm-hmm. guess that's how we'll tell them apart. The, Easter eggs with the white helmets are Rebel Rebellion. Um, the Rainstorm kits are like kind of aggressive. The Rainstorm kits are a lot. And these, like, it's it's Easter. It's a little bit of a softer color palette, even though it's still kind of wild. Whereas, like, the Rainstorm kits are aggressive, in your face, loud. Like, you can't miss that one. Yeah. Where the the Ribble kits have that European kind of like impressionist color scheme that is a little bit softer. We just got a question in the chat that um, reminded me of another kit drop. The question is, does the Atlanta rise no longer exist? And the answer to that is they do exist. They don't exist yet. They actually haven't had kits. They just did their kit uh, reveal. So I don't think they have any um, events on the calendar i would assume they're going to be doing some of the speed week usa crits spin the district uh Mm -hmm. ouroboros of crits that i want to talk about a little bit later but looks like they've got two two different kit options here i think the lower one looks pretty good though um one's like a home kit and one's like an away kit um so i'm not sure how they're discerning what's home and away unless it's the, the NCL events. Right. I'll be honest, uh, kits are whatever to me. There's no dinosaurs or electric frogs <laughs> or, you know, crazy designs. So it's not if it's primal, per- I'm going to pass on yeah, a tasteful It's not particularly kit. primal. Um, yeah. I think the, uh, the Miami away kit is definitely a step up from last year's NCL Miami kit. Uh, the Miami kit kind of looks like 2015 PacSun shirts it does but i think it's still better than last year's kit last year's kit with <laughs> the, so the like yeah screensaver city skyline um yeah was like it's four rough. out of ten and this is like six out of ten so a step in the right direction i would say and also a color yeah. that i just like that color and they kept it graphically pretty simple so yeah yeah not bad, but to the question of Atlanta Rise, we haven't seen them doing any events together as Atlanta Rise yet, but um, we've we seen will... the we've seen them out racing as individuals, specifically Quentin Goosens. Um, haven't seen a lot of Brock Mason or John Brock or um, was it Howard um, Forrest Howard either? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, so no NCL races have been, I'm going to save this. We're going to get into this when we get into calendar later. Okay. I think the next thing we need to talk about is, uh, is, uh, Sunny King, which I'm going to be at. So, 
Sunny King crit this weekend. It's the biggest race in Alabama for sure. Um, Anniston, Alabama, classic four corner crit. Uh, it's been going for well over 20 years, if not more than that. Um, yeah. It was the first crit I ever did, and it looks like we're, we've got a really good field this year. Um, looking at the pro registrations, actually the women's side looks a little bit thin. I'm interested yeah. to see if that fills out before race day. I was surprised by how thin the women's field was. It's like what when I looked, it was less than 25 women. I think it may be more than that now. I'll, I'll pull up the, uh, the who's registered right quick but so we can get a little bit more up up to date information i guess this is the advantage of doing it live is like it's going out right now so this is in the moment uh what's going on yeah a hundred in the men i bet that men's field will fill up completely yep um small field in the women's looks like a couple of austin outlaws Oh, I Emily. just discovered this. I can sort by team. It makes it so much easier to look at. Right. So <laughs> Kingdom Elite from Florida fielding a full squad here. Scat Atlanta actually uh, looking pretty strong. It looks like some Goldman Sachs ETFs racing. Mm -hmm. I think there may be more Goldman Sachs racers coming. Uh, I've seen that team posting on their Instagram. Um, and they made a couple of big pickups. I think on the women's side, that's maybe a squad to look for. Yep. Moving up this year. Um I it, they made a couple of pickups from the riders that were left in the lurch by the NCL stuff. It's worth noting uh Brittany Parfrey is racing for SCAD, which she could kind of boss that one. She could be a dark horse to win that. I see some uh Debbie Milne is a little bit of a a legend mm -hmm. uh yeah. racing looks like solo for super bars yeah i think we're gonna see more than that on the day um for sure on the men's side though uh yeah so atlanta rise to the question of do they exist or not they do it looks like this is their first uh race as a team they dropped their kit last week so i assume we're gonna see them in their actual kits uh, four, four of them there, three. I so maybe Burgoyne. I believe I heard an interview with him where he said he was actually going to do Redlands. So I wonder if um if all of them are just going to go do Redlands and we'll you know if they had pre registered already, we might not see them. Guten Plan, uh, Cliff Drifters, um, CRCA Foundation from New York is coming down. First Internet Bank. First Internet Bank is a team that I don't really know who who's on that team or what they're doing this year, so I'll be interested to see them. Kingdom Elites fielding a full squad. National the, Local. Yeah, so uh, some dark, maybe not dark horses, but teams that punched above their weight last year that I'm interested to see. Um, Nashville Local had a lot of good results with... Um, Kyle Teasler and Jeremiah Stoller last year. So I think they could do well uh, at Sunny King this weekend. Also, um, NGCA has got um, Abner coming off that podium at the race um, in Belize, and we know that he is flying. We've been racing with him. Chad Conley, a guy who uh, won the first uh, when Birmingham Hammerfest was on the USA Crit Circuit in 2017 or 18, he won that for automatic and then took some time off racing, and now he's back with uh, NGCA. A little bit of a sneaky... I feel like NGCA has been quietly kind of a local elite team in recent years, and like th they could be this year's Nashville local, meaning like a team that last year was kind of anonymous yeah. and this year they're in a couple breaks. They're getting a couple results here and there. Um, yeah, that's definitely possible for them for sure. I, I think rainstorm is hard to ignore as the odds on favorite here though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Gomez, Hernandez, Summerhill, Rodriguez, all of those guys have either won Sonny King or have been on the podium for Sonny King at some point. Zach Barron is super strong. Kyle Perry. Summerhill won the ACC last year. Yeah, hard to ignore that one. Yeah, we've got series champions, national champions. Also, just the parkour of this race, this is a relatively flat it's maybe the whole course is on like a one and a half percent tilt but it's a flat ish four corner crit i will say the the corner three to four uphill it's it kicks a little bit more than you would think it does yeah it's deceptive yeah um it's and it takes a little bit longer. Like it looks short, but then you're like you're on that part of the course for like almost forty five seconds. Yeah. And the remainder takes forty seconds, you know. Um it does take a while. I do think speaking of Summerhill, I'm I'm pretty sure this was Summerhill. Uh maybe the last year he was on um before they turned into human powered health, uh when he was on UHC. I'm pretty sure it was him. Coming into corner three, so off the downhill, attacks the downhill and comes into corner three like I'm standing there eating a funnel cake or something and (laughs) leans into that corner at what had to have been 40 miles an hour. And I've seen people slide out many times. I've seen a pedal strike slide out. But I mean, it's like he turned the bike and it just didn't. It was like the tires didn't hook up at all. He just continued (laughs) going the same direction, but with his bike at a 90 degree angle just absolutely blasted corner three in a way that was unreal. Uh, did, didn't make the corner, like hit the bar- barriers and uh, did not make it. So hopefully better luck for him. I mean, he knows what he's doing for sure, and he's had several years to correct that. But that image of like someone just barreling through that corner is burned into my mind. Um, that was scary that year yeah work hard be humble also here team Mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier so gabe mendez gonna be out there um um velocia sport gauge hecht yeah that's a a little bit of a dark horse there yeah gauge hecht um cyclocross racer probably one of the top five cyclocross racers in the country racing for velocia sport so which you know I might get some heat for this. I'm just going to say it. USA Crits website has Velocia Sport labeled as a D1 team. Not a D1 team. I'll just yeah. be honest. More of like a local elite team. Yeah. Although, I don't know. If they've got Gage Heck now, maybe they'll maybe they'll step up this year. I don't yeah. know. And like, what does D1 entail? I feel like when USA Crits... Uh, the D1 status was something where you like you kind of just had to pay your buy-in to it, and then you were D1 at least in the previous incarnation. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they got the budget to be D1 this year. Um, Butcher Box has a strong squad here too. Yeah. Andrew Janot, Peter Olenichek coming over from Project Echelon is a big pickup for them. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, excited about Sunny King. We will be out there. Uh, I'm going to be racing the Cat 2 race in the afternoon and then sticking around and watching the pros for sure and then racing the Pro 1-2 road race on Sunday. So, And then my slow ass will be team directing. Yeah, you'll be handing me bottles while I'm trying to survive that Pro 1-2 road race. I'll I'll be wearing a polo. Official. Nice. Very (laughs) official. The... uh, it's exciting. First national crit of the year um, kicks off the USA crit season and or series, not season. And it's going to be so fun. So talking about the crit series brings me to kind of like my, my last thing, but it's, it's also the thumbnail of the video. I want to talk about the like n- Russian nesting doll of crit series we have in America right now. So, there is the uh, USA Cycling Criterium National Series, which is an overarching umbrella that contains several of these smaller series. 
No. So it, no, it's it's basically a select handful of USA Crits races, or I'm sorry, American Crit Cup races. So how is it different from ACC? Um, Are all of so, these races ACC races? From yes, um, and from what I understand, so the difference being, if I'm understanding it correctly, someone correct me if I'm wrong, is so like ACC is picking like day whatever of intelligentsia yeah, as the ACC race. And they're picking day whatever of Toad to be an ACC race or whatever it looks like. Mm-hmm. From my understanding, like all of Intelligentsia is part of the USA cycling series. And so all 10 of those races count for that series, if I'm understanding it correctly. Wow. So I was going to try to make a flow chart of this. And I'm glad I didn't do it before we had this conversation because my chart would have been wrong. So there's like, because I thought this was more like uh, what USA Cycling used to do before the pro, they had the pro CX calendar where it was like all of the professional cross races were, it wasn't a series, it was a calendar. I thought this was one of those situations where it was like a wider ranging umbrella that took in things from all of these different series. So... We have that, and that kind of it's correlates not. with ACC, but it ACC is based on individual days of these events like Tulsa Tough or Dairyland that are multiple day things. Right, because it'll say like you know Dairyland is you know June twenty second, but on the USA Criterium Series you know website, it's saying it's eight events over thirty five days of racing. Which, so all eight count for that, whereas just mm-hmm. there is one that counts for the it's crit series within crit series, yeah. um, which we don't need more confusing anything in bike racing at this point. Like, yeah, if Agreed. you're going to do a national series, cherry pick some races that are not all part of the same series and then like expand. Like, I don't know. So there's another version of this going on with USA Crits, which here's the, we got Sunny King this weekend, uh, Noonan in a week, then Mm -hmm. Spartanburg, Athens, and LaGrange, all a part of that series. And then that overlaps with, but is not one-to-one with Speed Week, Mm -hmm. which... uh, speed week so this is such a confusing i i stared at this for a minute earlier there's a graphic on the website that has these two calendars side by side but it doesn't have the dates lined up so you're, you you kind of have to look across the columns um speed week is greenville spartanburg athens peachtree corners union city um there's a track night and LaGrange and College Park, whereas USA Crits is Sunny King, Noonan. Those are not part of the one I was just talking about. And then it picks up with Spartanburg, which is both. Mm -hmm. Athens is both. LaGrange is only USA Crits, not Speed Week. Yep. Right? And then... Winston Salem. No, Lagrange is Speed Week too. Oh, Lagrange is Speed Week, but then Winston Salem. Two days of Winston Salem are USA Crits, but not Speed Week. So those are Venn diagrams that like overlap a lot. They're almost concentric, but there's a couple things on the outside, like Rock Hill mm-hmm. um, All Star Race and Winston Salem are only in this circle, and then. Uh, the uh spartanburg nope spartanburg is both i can't remember dude i'm i'm looking at it and i can't remember this this is the problem we no, have but been, i'm not even done like, you because uh, <laughs> within this within speed week there is uh spin the district which is like atlanta's right. <laughs> airport business improvement district series of races that are within speed week so it is, it's like, I was thinking Layers. of it as Russian nesting dolls, but they don't all actually fit inside of each other. So it's more like 
this Venn diagram where they overlap, but then there are some, so then let's talk about the ones that are like totally separated because there's uh, NCL, which the NCL teams compete in all of the above, everything we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And then also have the NCL races, which are a wholly separate series Venn diagram, which hasn't been announced yet. And I last year I was very skeptical and then they pulled it together. So based on that, I'm going to assume they're going to do the same thing this year. We had a race in the NCL series already this year. Like what I mean is like last year they already had done they Miami had by this time. Yeah. Right. But I think and they there's... recognized that was a mistake. I think they were I scrambling agree. for that. I agree. Um, but yeah, we're, almost, we're a quarter of the way through the year and it's kind of radio silence on that. Mm-hmm. But th- this is the problem. You and I have been racing bikes for 10 plus years at this point, pretty much put our entire personal lives into the sport. And we're sitting here trying to figure out the Venn diagram of races and calendars and what goes with what. How is, as a USA Cycling, as somebody who's supposed to be, you know, their entire job is to grow the sport as an organization. How is, how are they supposed to look at a calendar of races or, you know, ACC or whatever, USA Crits, and actually say, okay, these are the elite top level races that matter. And yeah, we're sitting here trying to figure this out. How is a casual person who maybe walked up to Athens last year and got into racing supposed to figure any of this out? So I think there's good and bad here. And I think the bad is what you're talking about, which is that it's just generally confusing and like it's so much. It's it's a lot to know. It's like pulling the attention in in many directions and it's hard to... We're going to try to cobble together a storyline for this year. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we're going to be following all this stuff right so that uh so that you don't have to but it's not going to be easy <laughs> we're i'm i'm going to have to make this flow chart that's going to be my next you know <laughs> right uh, you're going to you're going to have to get in tableau and yeah. figure this out yeah and yeah. that's how that's how bad it is we're going to have to use tableau mm-hmm. to figure out the criterion calendar for 2024 <laughs> yep <laughs> but, yeah uh, that's what we're going to have to do but the good is, and this is the direction we should. So, without losing anything, I think we could. Like you said something the other day that unlocked it for me. This was one of those moments of like we're just talking, and then it's like ah, f- this should be this the show. Um, but you were talking about how there should be regional series, and we almost have that this year. But there should be. Yeah. It's too big of a country having a national series and expecting a team to have the budget to to fly all over the country or drive a 18 wheel or Mm -hmm. however bike trailer, you know, a whole rig to all of this stuff. It's a lot to ask. No one has that budget, but what we could have is several regional series and then a way to correlate those, whether that's a playoff qualification, just three or four big races at the end of the year that are national level, However that funnel upward works. Here's what I would like to see. And DM me if you have a problem with this opinion. I don't care. I'll have a conversation. Say it in the chat. We're we're live right now. (laughs) There needs to be five regional series. Northwest, Southwest, Midwest, Southeast, and Northeast. That needs to run concurrently from March to, let's say, June or July. There needs to be five or six national races that the top three teams points wise from each of those series qualify into and they get, you know, budget assistance or whatever it takes to get to those. And you say, okay, these are the 15 best teams sending five to seven riders. This is the national series. This is what counts. Hot take here. Five riders. I think I love it. Teams are too big. It's too expensive. Um, 
half of those guys are getting dropped anyway. I think five rider teams go on. I don't have an issue with that. But you say, okay, the top, if you're doing 50 times five, 15 times five, that's what, 75? No, 60. That's 60 people. Okay, so these are the top 60 crit races in the country. These are the top 15 teams. They're going to duke it out. The winners of these series is the best teams in the country. Mm-hmm. They get an automatic qualification into next year's national series. Restart. And that gives these small teams, your kingdom elites, your work hard, be humbles, your honestly at this point, us at Skyway, NGCA, they gives them an next opportunity year. next year, right? <laughs> that gives them the opportunity to fight into those national races and qualify and like earn their mm-hmm. spot there. Yeah. Versus, you know, entering into these 125 person fields where they're not getting a call up, they're getting shot out the back and not even giving a fair shot to actually race the race when they mm-hmm. may or may not be strong enough to be there. That lets them totally prove like, you know, you can work out this pecking order in yeah. a way that is like more cost effective for the teams mm-hmm. with these regional regional series. And I think we also don't have to like create anything race wise that doesn't exist. Maybe yep. a few races would need to get scooted forward and when they happen, but like, you know, I could see the Southeast region being essentially the period we're about to go into where the, that Southeast series is Sunny King, Athens, Twilight, Noonan, LaGrange, uh, Winston out, Salem. Yeah. Yeah. Or Spartanburg, some, mm-hmm. something like that. Yep. And like, that's the Southeast region. And then the Northeast is like, uh, Rochester. I so someone someone give me some some uh, snake snake alleys snake out in alley. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, you know Harlem skyscraper. Mm-hmm. Um, you know those races. Midwest. Now, okay. When I say national, if you want my opinion, it should be a race in each of those regions at the end of the year. So move Tulsa to the fall. Move Athens to the fall. This is what yeah. That's what I was going to say is Harlem skyscraper to the fall or something like that. The Mm -hmm. five truly biggest races, the races where everyone are like, these are the super bowl of crits. Mm -hmm. Those are the national races. Yep. So, you know, what would it be? Salt Lake, Tulsa, Athens, twilight. We need a California one. What's the California one? The Redlands crit. Yeah. Um, Snake Alley or Harlem Skyscraper, bam. You've got five races. These are the real races. These are the ones that count. Everything else are regional qualifiers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that makes a ton of sense. And and my point is that, like, we're not saying you have to create 100 races that don't exist. It's just, like, we could take... And they're already sort of self-grouping themselves. Like, USA Mm -hmm. Crits is almost the Southeast, or even Speed Week is like almost the Southeast series this year. Yep. Um, ACC is almost the kind of like Midwest series this year. Absolutely. NCL could even, if they wanted to uh, move their geography, see, NCL is is too uh, Southeast focused, but maybe the. Williams Brothers, CRIT, maybe they do all those in California, and and that becomes the California series. Yep. Or they, they pick up some uh, Manhattan Beach GP, Giro San Francisco, those become CRIT races. I'm just saying that it's yep. already like the, I think because sponsorship dollars are tighter this year, they're having to go more geographically tight with these series, and that makes sense for a lot of reasons. Like, I think mm-hmm. we should keep doing that, not just because it's cheap for organizers, but well, it makes sense. As a team director who Skyway has finally gotten to the point where I have dollars to spend, I can actually support the guys on the team and get them to races. I looked at the calendar and I was like, yo, USA crits. It's all within driving distance of all of our guys. Mm-hmm. I can fund our riders to go to those races on not a lot of money Mm -hmm. but it's money that i can budget so you get teams that don't have to have 50 60 hundred thousand dollar budgets that can focus on a series to go to that they can compete at and then 
they qualify or don't qualify the nationals that's fine right um they have a shot to do well at that and even i mean mm -hmm. there's also i think growing these regional like racing the same people in the same region one i think you'll see less crashes because guys just know each other and yeah you, you're a little bit less willing to kill someone that you know you know their kids you see their their right. wife on the sidelines like that kind right. of stuff and also it's it's gonna grow those scenes i think mm -hmm. you're gonna have more amateur participation under that where it's not uh you know guys who don't have as much of a local scene pinning their entire hopes on one trip to tulsa for the year and getting crashed out i think right. if it's like there's five races i can drive to they're happening every year mm-hmm look at it from a talent id standpoint like as a director you know i see one guy you know who's getting a consistent top 20 in these races he's not on a team he's a privateer i can go hey we need to you know scout this guy let's interview him let's make sure see if he's a good fit for the team helps with that mm -hmm. um this could be the bourbon talking but i i don't see why we don't do that and i think the way the calendar is looking this year it's on the way to doing that yeah we're and I think it's fantastic. Yeah, we're that's the positive. Is like we're closer than we've ever been to that with with USA Crits being so geographically close to us. Or it's starting to move that way. But what USA Cycling needs to do, rather than create another arbitrary point structure that is laid on top of the ACC, is create a higher layer that is saying like ACC is Midwest. USA crits is Southeast and you guys need to run these things concurrently. And here's the point structure that will qualify you into mm -hmm. whatever the, the four big ones, the five big ones at the end of the year that we all decide are the big ones and to be in the, and maybe that changes how they work. It's not like a pro one, two, and then goes down from there. There's like a, the championship race. And then there's a one, two, you know what I mean? And to yep. get into the championship race, you have to qualify in through one of these other series. You have to be a top team. I, I think it should also be team-based. I think it should be mm -hmm. team, not rider, but points for winning a race are heavily weighted, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it should be team-based. Like, if Rainstorm wins a race, they get 100 points. Second place gets 75, then 50, and then it breaks down, or however that ends up looking. Um and it's you, the team qualifies in, not yeah. riders, because so it's, it's a team sport. Let's yeah. start acting like it's a team sport. It's a little bit more in the NCL direction, but we're not talking about a ton of preems and things that make it overly complicated. Yep. But we're talking about, I think also the points should go probably 50 places deep or something so that it's it's meaningful yeah. and you, you're racing all the way. That's one of the things I like about cyclocross is like, people are racing for 25th place. You know what I mean? So absolutely not. There should be significantly less points available down there at 50, like at 50, you're getting one point or something, but first place gets 50 points. 50th gets one point. No, I think and, it should no, be. I'm, jo I'm joking, but you <laughs> yeah. know, like there should be, there should be a curve, but this yeah. is all off the dome. We're, we're live <laughs> right now. Well, we're doing the thing where we pontificate yeah after an sure. hour um but I, I think that's the direction it needs to go to make american racing make sense because it's not germany it's not italy we have such a big geography where you have to have a budget of almost a quarter million dollars to attend all of the big national races and you may or may not be paying your riders anything by that point right you know? um so to make it sustainable, make it effective, and let smaller teams really compete and establish themselves. And to let That's... people who are not like independently wealthy kind of commit themselves to the sport. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I can do some regional races and then one or two big ones, like a couple of mm -hmm. big national trips a year. Um, but if you're asking me to fly to every ACC race, it's like, I just I can't do that. I don't have that much paid time off. Well, Even yeah, I'm not good enough to do that. But assuming I was, or you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, 
So we'll even how, look how at much the... talent are we missing out on because they mm-hmm. can't do that? Well, even just look at the geography for ACC. If you live in the southeast, the closest drive, the closest race for you in the southeast is St. Louis, which is an eight-hour drive from Birmingham, which is not even Florida. So, yeah. and then you're looking at you know Littleton, Indiana, Indiana, um, Utah, like. The ACC series is not feasible unless you are Legion, Rainstorm, an NCL team, um, a Vola. Like, you have to be that highest echelon level of team to even make it to all of those races. Yeah, for sure. And even then, it's like half of the teams you just named, those people are getting salaries, but I don't think they're getting salaries on a Volo and they're juniors or whatever. But yeah. When you graduate from a Volo, you have to get a job. It's like there's this step that's missing, and I wonder how many good uh, riders like fall into this this middle zone where they don't end up on a team that's going to pay them a salary. They could maybe even get on a team that would pay for them to race all of those races, mm-hmm. but not pay them a salary, and they go like, well, I'm going to go be an aerospace engineer, whatever my degree was, rather right. than, you know. Well, we saw that very clearly with Mac Dorf at Salt Lake. Is that what, yeah, where is he mm-hmm. at this year? Is he's he just on, out? He's on a team. But you have that talent where he was on, I want to say it was Hot Tubes. There's that, where we're talking about that missing... The gap, yeah. The gap, mm-hmm. where he was on top tube, super talented, was bossing the front of Salt Lake, mm-hmm. had nowhere to go. It took him at Salt Lake basically manhandling the race and getting every preem he could get to get noticed and by somebody. Almost winning the race off the gambler preem. Right. Crazy solo move. Right. That's a level of talent that's possibly getting lost in the, the shuffle. Mm -hmm. because there's not a clear line there's not a clear path to that because it's not feasible to do Mm -hmm. it they're getting lost because the choice is uh you know a ton of travel and zero dollars or go have a normal life like there's it's yeah because it's a big country and a big spread out series anyway I think this is a we so for everyone out there we didn't talk about that at all before. This is no. just like the kind of thing we get into. That was the kind of conversation that we were like this should be the show. Um we'll have this conversation like 4 hours into a ride like yeah, calorie starved. <laughs> yeah. So I think we've covered it. Um yeah, we'll see uh Sunny King this weekend. Yep. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to get my eyes on some of these new teams, Rainstorm especially. We're gonna and win. uh <laughs> Yeah, look for us in the Cat Two race, uh one o'clock on the stream. One o'clock central. Um Yeah, I we're gonna be back on a pretty regular schedule of these, I think. So I guess mm-hmm. start looking and maybe do more of these live. I don't know, this felt pretty good and smooth to me. We'll see how the I audio like to, and video i like doing them live yeah there's something about the energy of the live show and something about the fact that i don't need to edit it and it's already on youtube yeah anyway thank you guys for watching uh keep your eyes on this channel and uh see you guys next time peace